Welcome back to Orange Chat Reviews. I'm giving my episode 3 review of The Mandalorian. I gotta say, I am liking this show. And I am going to get the obvious out of the way. Does that excuse Disney? Does that mean I am forgiving Disney? No, it does not. I will never forgive them for what they have done over the years. I will never forgive them for how they treat fans. I will never forgive them for how they treat people who are doing nice things but are treated horribly by Disney in return. I will not forgive Disney just because they make one or two or three good products. They will never be forgiven by me. Now with that out of the way, let's get into the video. The Mandalorian Episode 3, basically, he got a ship fixed, he turned the kid over to the imps, or the remnant Imperials, and I could I could just tell, this he developed a liking to the kid, he developed an attachment to the kid, and I knew that he would not let the imps hold it, so I could predict, if I can predict something, automatically the score does drop. Now... Does that mean I could predict the whole thing? No. There was one thing that surprised me. Until, like, two seconds before it happened. And I'm like, yeah, something's about to happen. And I know exactly what. And then it did. So, yes. This episode was predictable. So, it does lose points. The score is... It's mundane. I'm not really feeling the score. So, it will also lose points points so objectively it is four out of five if you could predict and stuff if it has a predictable storyline it it means that it could be improved so yes this it will i will give it a four out of five eight out of ten it's still a solid show subjectively i will give it a 4.5 out of five now showgoer i do like the mandalorian does that mean i like disney now no i already said that it is a five out of five the mandalorian is a five out of five showgoer review meaning i'm not it's keeping me interested now let's delve into some of the things that i liked about it i love how they are delving into the lore how some of the mandalorians had issue with him because he was Dealing with Imperials to get this Beskar because they were Imperial stamped. And the armor tells him. This belonged to us. He is simply returning it. It is ours and it belongs to us. And this is the way. And then they all say this is the way. He, or she asked him how his armor got damaged. And they'll have to get, or they can make him a full metal or a full plate of armor full set and he explained i got into a fight with or got into a battle with mudhorn and she's like a mudhorn would be a great emblem for you and he says i can't it was not an honorable kill and that is one of the things that i love how they're reintroducing into this honor a mandalorian even in the eu honor was one of the most important things as was armor as was family and they they are taking some of those things from the EU and then placing them in here. And she's like, okay, if I can't make you a mud horn emblem, I will make you some whistling birds. And at first I'm like, whistling birds, whistling birds. Well, chances are I do not think she's talking about an actual bird. I think I know what she's talking about. And I had a feeling, and I was right, they were micro missiles made out of the Beskar. And micro smart missiles, which are pretty cool too. So yeah, something or it's a nice little kind of callback to uh, Iron Man's smart little missiles. And it's John Favreau. I mean, it you could definitely tell it's a nice Favreau touch. But it it's also believable in Star Wars because Mandalorians they worked wonders with Beskar because they were the only ones who could forge it. Anyway, you could tell that there was some contention. One of the other Mandos tried removing 
the Mandalorian's helmet, and he, uh, they started getting into a fight. They pulled blades. They started going at each other, and she's like, "Hey, that's enough." He was simply returning it. It belongs to us anyway. And they explain that this is our way. This is the way. And they all say this is the way. So it establishes that the Mandalorian uh, convert is a religion. It is a religion as much as a way of life. And so he goes, after he gets his armor, he... Finally gets his crisis of conscience, goes in to rescue the baby Yoda species. The baby. The child. And after he leaves that area, after killing almost everybody in there, the tracking fobs that everybody else got, which is established in the story, everybody got a fob, but they wouldn't, or they wouldn't take the bounty because it's it was very hard. Well, now that the bounty is reactivated and tracking fobs all were activated and whatnot. Well, yeah. They all went after him, including Carl Weathers' character, Grief somebody. Or Grief. Krogan. Yeah, Grief Krogan. And it's like, well, so then he gets to a shootout to protect the kid. He holds his own. He does a very good job holding his own against these people, or against all these bounty hunters and whatnot in the guild. He went against the guild. And he realized that, shit, kind of cornered myself. But, the two, like I said, there was a part that I could predict, which was two seconds later. I'm like, yeah, the other Mandos are going to step in. And two seconds later, a missile goes over his head and knocks a dude off the roof. And then you see all the Mandos with the jetpacks coming in. And they come, <laughs> it, they come in in a good way. It shows you that Mandos stick up for each other. They protect their own. And they help him escape with the kid. And as he's escaping, you see one of them on a jetpack fly up. The one that he actually fought with. And he gives him a salute before he turns back. And he also says, or he even tells the guy that was fighting him while he was covering him on the ground. He's like, you'll have to relocate the convert. He's like, don't worry about it. We knew this was bound to happen. This is the way. And they repeat, this is the way. I mean, it's a nice touch. And it shows that, yes, they had their little quarrel. But they understood afterward that they are Mandalorian. This show is good that it delves into the lore. That it explains that even though the Mandalorians may have small squabbles... They will protect their own. And so when the guy flies, after giving him a salute, flies off with his, or turns off with his jetpack, the man, he drops the line, he's like, yeah, I'm going to have to get me one of those. So yeah, the show, it ends with a good, it, it's a very good ending. Now this only shows that basically the Mandalorian's going to be hunted because that is an act, or he reactivated the bounty on the kid. That kid is going to be hunted for his the rest of his life. And so is the Mandalorian. They're going to have to... Or he's going to have to defend that kid. So chances are, in the next episode, there's going to be people going after him. Anyway, that is the video, folks. I like this show. Does that mean I like Disney? No, it does not. Y'all know the drill. Like, comment, subscribe, share, all that jazz. Let me know what you guys think of Episode 3's Mandalorian. Do you guys like the show, or do you continue to maintain your boycotts? What do you do? I'm pay The only thing that I'm going to ever pay Disney is for the Disney Plus app. It's so I can expand my content. Anyway, folks, that is the video. I don't want to carry on too long. Y'all have a good day. This has been Orange Hat Reviews, and I'll catch y'all on the next one. You actually might see a different background when you do. <laughs> Take it easy.